Hi folks, Brian from Fortress for Art here. Today I'm going to take you on a journey through Granger Market in Newcastle. It's one of those places as a kid brings back uh, great memories. I remember going there daddy every week with my mother and my nana. The main thing they wanted to do here was to get themselves away to the warehouse. Hope you enjoy what I present to you, hope you enjoy the artwork at the end. If you do enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel uh, down below in YouTube. And if you click the bell icon as well, you get a reminder every time I put a new video out. The other thing I'd really appreciate is at the end of the video, if you give me the thumbs up and thumbs down as to whether you like the video and the resulting artwork, that helps me gauge what I'm presenting. But also along with that, you put a comment in as to why you liked it or why you disliked it and help me to it. Thanks very much for now. I'll take you on this journey with me. I'll be back with you shortly. We're just coming up to a very well-known shop, certainly well-known in the Granger Market and throughout the United Kingdom and beyond. This was only the second Marks and Spencer Penny Bazaar in the world. And they've kept it pretty much true to life. You see they've uh, retained the original gas mantles, though they've changed that now understandably to electric bulbs. One of the things I find quite interesting here is the top there you can see it says admission free and the reason for that is when the uh, Granger Mart was first built it wasn't usual for people to be allowed into the actual shop there'd be a counter you'd be served from the counter you'd ask for what you wanted you put on the counter, you pay for it, and you walk off. So admission free was a way of showing people that actually they could come in, they could feel, they could uh, touch the clothing, etc. that they were selling at the time. And uh, quite unusual as, as far as that's concerned at the time. Marks and Spencer, original Penny Bazaar. And here we're coming up to the very place that my mum and nana used to come just about every week. The warehouse. Very famous in the Granger market. And if you have a look at the door there, it's quite a sizable opening, quite a sizable door. And the reason for that isn't because people were so fake. It's actually because originally this was used for weighing carcasses. Remember I said earlier that there were 150 plus butchers at one point in the Granger market? Well, this was originally used for weighing carcasses, not people. And that's the reason for the big doors. But when pre-packed meat started to become popular, they realised they could actually use this as a gimmick to get people weighed. It's reckoned that up to 2,000 people get weighed here every day nowadays. Here we are, one of the few butchers remaining in the Granger Market. It's hard to think that at one point there used to be over 150 butchers altogether in the Granger Market. Many of those have long gone, only a couple of them left now. This is another one of those stores that I remember as a kid. Robinson's Pet Shops. Of course back then they had, uh, back then they were selling cats and dogs and all sorts of things. Not allowed to sell live animals now. One of the best uh, slogans again in the market. All our best customers wear tails. Robinsons. 
And apparently those four animals there have been there since the day the store opened. Looking a bit worse for wear nowadays, I think. As you might be able to tell, this pizza place is one of the more popular shops in the Granger market nowadays. People often queuing outside for a slice of pizza. Thank you. Checks in the post. Two main parts to the Granger Market. We've got the aisles where Marks and Spencer's first shop was. Here we're in the arcade area. And the reason for all the scaffolding and boring is that there's a glass roof up there which is getting on for 200 years old and it's been letting some water in. So this is here to keep the public safe as they mend the leaking roof. Don't know when it's going to be finished, but when I do, I'll let you know. So we're still in the Granger Market in the southwest sector of the arcade. I'm going to take you through the exit, which is just behind Fagan's flower shop in front of you, to show you something that not many people know about. This is Newcastle's coat of arms. Newcastle's coat of arms originates from the 14th century. It depicts quite clearly the castle of Newcastle. The two seahorses that you see were added in 1575 to signify it was a seafaring port. The coat of arms also has a Latin motto, Fortita, defend it, triumphans, literally meaning triumphing by brave defence. In 1644, the men of Newcastle were off fighting in the Civil War on the side of the King. The Scots then came down from Scotland across the border and laid siege to Newcastle. And during this time, it was only by the determination of the older men and the women of the city that they resisted the siege and remained loyal to the King until help came. So it's surprising really how much history there is in a place that so many people visit on a daily basis. And I was talking to a member of the management team in the Granger Market a few weeks ago. And he told me something very interesting. Looking at the paintwork, it looks particularly new. 
and the reason why it looks new is because it is new. As part of the renovation of the Granger Market, not only are pieces like this being spruced up and repainted, but they're going to the extent of using the same lead-based paint that was originally used when the Granger Market was erected. It's amazing how far people will go to try and keep the integrity of something of that sort. Fantastic, I think. We're coming up to another one of those shops I remember as a lad. This is where I got my very first taste of proper coffee. So he's like trying to hang around like a little bit, don't just like run off. The age of 12 or 13, getting into Kenya AA back in the 70s. Long time ago. I'm going to take you through the warehouse now. No, this isn't to see how heavy I am. But I want to show you a particular picture hanging on the wall. This shows the banquet when the Granger Market opened in 1835. 2,000 men were there to celebrate the opening dinner. And for five shillings, the wealthier gentlemen diners could enjoy dinner provided by one of the local innkeepers and a pint of wine. Meanwhile, Working class men could buy a substantial dinner for two shillings and a pint of ale. And women? Somewhere between 300 and 400 women were allowed to watch the proceedings, but they were strictly confined to a specially built temporary gallery. I wonder how they'd get away with that nowadays. One of the things I really like about the Granger Market is the number of shops that are just that little bit quirky. Apparently the guy who took over this shop took it over when it was originally called the Cut Price Cigarette Emporium. He thought that was a bit too much, so he changed the name to the Cheap Tab Shop. And there are often big queues here on the Saturday morning to buy cigarettes. And you know what? They aren't any cheaper here than anywhere else. But a great way of getting people into your shop, I think, eh? Quite a popular artisan baker here. A few samples to try. Apparently the bread is baked daily at Crook in County Durham. And brought here for sale. Some fantastic looking loaves inside. I'm just walking past a relatively new shop, but it's straight away one of my favourites. The Casa Delicatessen. 
some lovely wines in there. Palms hanging up. It's a family business, and the thing I like most about this place is simply that sign. Family business since 2015. Well folks, that about finishes the tour of the Granger Market. I hope you've enjoyed it. I thought you've enjoyed some of the little facts and figures I've been able to bring to you. I particularly hope you enjoy the fine art print that is produced at the end of it. If you do like it, just remember pop along to photosforart.com. Thanks for watching, folks, and remember give it the thumbs up, the thumbs down. Please subscribe if you enjoyed it, and click the bell icon so that you're informed of future videos as they come out. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now.